Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I thank the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction for co-organizing this important event with us. I'm so very pleased to address you today on a critical issue for the small island developing states, that is, for strengthening policy coherence and synergies towards more effective climate action and disaster risk reduction. As climate action change intensifies, Increasing the frequency, magnitude, and duration of climate-related hazards, SIPs find themselves on the front lines of this crisis. Climate change is a major driver of disaster losses and SIPs severely hindering the sustainable development. The escalating frequency and intensity of climate-related disasters exacerbates existing social, economic, and environmental vulnerabilities for these countries. According to UNDRR reports, SIDS comprise up to two-thirds of the countries facing the highest annual disaster losses globally. Their small size, remoteness, and heavy dependence on global markets make them especially susceptible to external shocks, with any significant disruption posing a risk to their entire economies. To build resilience, SIDS require a comprehensive, systematic approach to assessing and managing climate risks. Integrating disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation perspectives and approaches is essential, as is aligning these efforts with other sustainable development frameworks. Global agreements like the UNFCCC, the Paris Agreement, the Death Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, and now the Antigua and Barbuda Agenda for SIPs, the ABAS, all underscored the need for concerted action on climate and disaster resilience. The ABAS calls for enhanced international support for the SIPs to address adaptation needs, minimize and address loss and damage, and enhance capacity and resilience in the SIPs. Achieving these goals demand collective global action and necessary investments. My office is committed to supporting SIPs in these efforts we are working with the entire UN system and various stakeholders to develop a monitoring and evaluation framework for the EBAS, ensuring alignment of implementation with the other global frameworks, including the Paris Agreement, the Sendai Framework, and the SDGs. Complementing this, we are developing a toolkit to support EBAS implementation at the national level in coherence with efforts at regional and global levels. We are engaging our SIPs national focal points extensively in this process, with special attention to the unique needs of the A's SIDS, given their unique uh, coordination challenges. Finally, Excellencies, we are fostering partnerships with relevant stakeholders, including civil society organizations and the private sector, to mobilize further resources and generate innovative solutions for climate resilience and DRR in SIDS. In closing, I extend my heartfelt thanks to our speakers and participants for participating in this side event and for their valuable contributions to the discussions. We look forward to today's discussions and the insights uh, that this will provide towards, its advance, towards advancing coherent policy implementation for the system. I thank you.